and I will be uh, yeah hosting today's um, presentation about <clears throat> AWS CDK. So uh, the title is a little bit catchy. Uh, why AWS CDK is like a wormy apple? Well, to be honest, uh, it, it really it depends. Uh, what do you mean by warm? Uh, apples are in general sweet, uh, tasty, and um, they are a really fine um, uh, fruits. So uh, it's not that CDK is bad. It's just that you need to be careful with what you are doing. Uh, or what you are working with. So uh, today's uh, agenda is uh, getting started with AWS CDK. So for people who doesn't have that much experience with this tool or uh, maybe uh, didn't have a, a chance to use it, I will just briefly show you based on the TypeScript example how to quickly bootstrap the, the environment. It's really just a, a matter of couple commands um, and maybe five to 10 minutes work from your site and you are good to go to start uh, using um, this tool. And next, uh, I will be um, explaining how uh, CDK works as an um, IAC tool. Uh, so how it's uh, different from Terraform, how it compares to Pulumi, um, and so on. Next, uh, I would like to briefly talk about the uh, release cadence. So. Uh, Small, 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 small spoiler is that it is quite rapid and it has its uh, benefits and uh, cons as well. And uh, the let's call it creme de la creme of the presentation will be the pitfalls uh, and what to look out for when using AWS CDK. So these uh, let's call it worms that may be uh, there in the apple and you need to look out for them. Just to know not to get this uh, bite you, you don't want to. And uh, during explaining this, uh, a few things, I will be running a demo, uh, presenting the issue and explaining why does it happen, how, how to remediate it, and uh, what to really look out for. And lastly, there, there of course, will be a Q&A session. So uh, yeah, let, let's uh, get started and um, move on. So. Uh, the kickoff. Uh, what is really needed in case of, of uh, developing uh, in TypeScript is uh, to download and install NVM, then move on to the installation of Node.js. Uh, there are two packages that are required for the TypeScript to work. Um, lastly, you need to bootstrap the environment, which I will be explaining uh, briefly as well, and in initialize the uh, CDK project. From the user perspective, it is really like uh, running uh, two commands. Um, um, uh, one right after another. Uh, and there are, of course, uh, things that happen under the hood that user is maybe not aware of. And uh, I will be trying to um, give a gist, uh, what is it, uh, how, how does it happen? So uh, when it comes to the um, NVM um, installation, it, it's really um, a matter of running a run command that you, you, you can get from the uh, um, main NVM GitHub site. So uh, it really looks uh, like this. You just run um, curl command uh, combined with bash, and uh, it is being installed, um, let's say, in, in a couple of seconds. Uh, next, uh, when, when you already have um, um, NVM present, you need to source the changes that NVM did to uh, your environment. So uh, in my case, it was Linux. So I was using the... Um, um, uh, WSL2 uh, on, on Windows, and uh, I, I had this uh, con config put into the bash RC. As you can see in the previous slide at the very bottom, you, you have a short brief explanation how to do this um, and uh, what has happened. And uh, you just really need to source this file. And right there, uh, there is just a one liner to install um, the latest um, node version. So uh, moving on, uh, uh, package installation. So of course, uh, you need TypeScript um, if you want to develop on it, but you can as well use uh, other languages, uh, which we will be, um, of course, discussing further in the presentation. Uh, but at this point, you just need to type these two commands. So installation of the lang uh, language you are going to be using and the AWS CDK um, package as well. And that's really it. Um, um, you, you go and you have the CDK tool installed. 
But to, to just prepare the environment, you need to bootstrap it. Uh, and what does it mean? As you can see, you run a simple command, uh, putting the uh, account ID of your AWS account, as well as the region, and maybe profile if you are using uh, multiple um, environments set up uh, for your uh, AWS account. Uh, so uh, what Bootstrap really does is it is installed under the hood or the components that uh, are being used by CDK that user does not need to interact with. So for example, maybe you are building an, an ECR image and uh, you want to have it put uh, into the ECR. Uh, there is a build up uh, function uh, inside the CDK that can uh, help you achieve it. So uh, as you can see on the... Um, um, well, first from the bottom line on the first image, you have a repository uh, created for the container assets that, that can be used. Uh, there are also few roles being deployed because CDK is uh, just doing a bunch of stuff with cloud formation under the hood. So for example, uh, you, you just need to look up something. So there is a dedicated look, lookup role. If you need to deploy something, there is also a deployment role uh, used by CDK. So uh, all in all, there is around uh, 11 to 12 components being uh, installed under the hood. And uh, the image below explains uh, how, how does it look when it passed successfully. So it also just takes around a uh, couple, maybe dozen of seconds. And uh, if you go to the cloud formation, you can actually see the um, CDK toolkit stack, which really explains how, um, uh, what, has been um, created by the CDK under the hood. So as mentioned, there is a, it's a repository. There are a bunch of roles. There is also a bucket because um, CDK is really doing the cloud, cloud formation under the hood. So you want to check uh, how much your uh, current code differs uh, from your previous iterations, right? So um, basically, CDK allows you to uh, gather and collect all the runs you are having inside this bucket and compare them. But of course, for you, uh, what is most important is the current run, uh, which we generate local file and then upload it to bucket. And the comparison between the latest um, um, template you put there with the previous iteration. And based on that, there is a ch change setting cloud formation created. But uh, not moving uh, too deep uh, at this point, um, let's move on to the next slide. And there is also this CDK init command. Uh, what it really does is uh, bootstrap all the necessary um, like uh, repository or uh, rather project lay layout you need to use uh, in order to work with CDK. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, it's still a, a one-liner. You need to put a language of your choice um, give the profile and uh, this release. And what is created is really this directory structure. So you have a bin folder where you have the um, CDK app and stack definition placed, the library folder containing all the libraries you are developing um, and using. There is not modules. Um, this folder is uh, being used by the NPM uh, and all the packages that um, you will be working on are installed right there. Uh, there is also an um, uh, in initial test uh, folder uh, where you can develop um, tests to be run with the CDK. And uh, from the static files, uh, the most important one is the uh, CDK JSON, uh, um, which really describes um, the context you, you are going to be using. So, for example, you can put there um, data about the environment you want to work on and maybe some uh, like constant parameters you, uh, the environment will be using. Uh, the package uh, version is also pinned at the uh, explained there. Uh, there is package JSON, TS config JSON, uh, which uh, really are um, uh, also files used by the NPM under the hood. And what is not seen uh, on, on this um, uh, image uh, right now is the CDK out uh, folder, which is like dynamically generated um, cloud formation um, template uh, for each stack that you are uh, working on uh, is being put uh, right there. And it, it is being used to, to compare uh, your current state um, you, you are developing on your local machine with the one that was uh, uh, late, latest and pushed um, um, with the CDK deploy commands which is linked in the S3 bucket. 
So uh, uh, in a nutshell, this is how it works. Um, I, I tried not to go too much into details, uh, just so uh, you won't be scared and not uh, necessary. Um, um, well, let's say uh, being un 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 unfriendly to CDK. And uh, moving on, uh, there are also helpful links. So I mentioned the um, GitHub page for NVM. And um, basically, these four links are all you need from this point on when you have run CDK init command uh, to start working with CDK. So of course, um, um, NVM installation, as mentioned, is put uh, in here. There is a, a short guide to use uh, CDK uh, commands, um, which of, of course uh, I will be showing you uh, on the demo. Um, but uh, there are also a uh, few comments I won't be uh, showing, displaying, uh, but uh, you can find the reference right there. Uh, there is a quick example uh, presented by AWS on the third link, and uh, the most important link in my opinion is the fourth one. So it is the um, uh, documentation uh, uh, explaining how, how you can interact uh, with the SDK um, through the code. So uh, there are all the CDK libraries um, with the examples and uh, uh, guidelines and how to use them. So for example, you want to uh, deploy EC2, you, you go right there, you grab the um, uh, correct construct, the, the concept uh, we will be uh, introduced um, pretty soon. Um, and you, you go uh, put some um, parameters uh, that are required and deploy um, EC2. Uh, and that's really it. All right, so um, this is the introduction. Um, I hope, hope I hope it was not uh, too boring uh, for every one of you. And uh, moving on to the uh, second topic we will be discussing today. So uh, how really AWS CDK works as an uh, uh, AIC tool? Okay, so the main characteristics uh, we can um, underline for the CDK, uh, CDK is uh, resource definition. So here we will be using one of uh, programming language, uh, languages uh, that are av available. And it really can be JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Java, C, -C Sharp, and Go. So you can just pick uh, the one you like, you are good at, and you, you are good to go to start using it. In comparison, um, Pulumi, one of the other EAC tools, also allow you to use multiple uh, programming languages to, do, to develop, develop the infrastructure. But in case of Terraform, you are left with the um, HashiCorp uh, HCL um, language or uh, JSON, which honestly, I uh, really didn't uh, saw uh, being used. So from this point, um, you, you can see that if you have a strong programming background, that might be a tool for you. Um, you, you may be linked towards AWS CDK uh, due to this. Next, the cloud interface. So uh, what I really mean here is uh, how do we speak with uh, AWS? In case of uh, AWS CDK, uh, we are uh, using cloud, for, cloud, form, uh, cloud formation under the hood. So it's kind of a wrapper that allows you to use um, Mm, high level abstraction programming language to apply a cloud formation under the hood. So you are talking with um, cloud formation API uh, in reality, uh, which um, you, you need to be aware of because um, all the limitations as well as the, mm, uh, let, let's say, mm, perks of cloud formation uh, will be present here as well. Uh, in case of Terraform, for example, uh, the, this interface is uh, AWS SDK, um, which let's say allows you to be more uh, specific granular because uh, you, you, you are uh, speaking with SDK. Lumi is doing this as well. So this is one of the differences uh, we can find here. Um, in a way, AWS um, covered some of the, uh, let's say, not not that strong points of cloud formation uh, um, creating AWS CDK. Uh, next is main build concept. So in case of uh, AWS CDKs, there there are applications, stacks, and constructs. Uh, if we are going to be um, pre uh, precise, uh, we can say that applications and stacks are uh, constructs as well. And uh, what it really is, is it is this. Um, kind of uh, a package you get. So uh, when you want to uh, deploy something, you are using constructs uh, in, in AWS CDK. Uh, 
Uh, I will be brief, briefly explaining it in, in the details, but what you really need to know, it is uh, like a package or co container, right? Uh, in case of Terraform, you will be using resources. Um, um, and in case of Pulumi, um, I'm not really sure. So I will be skipping this one uh, here. And when it comes to state handling, uh, we have a Terraform, which is using um, its uh, state you probably heard of, uh, the one you can remotely put in S3 bucket. Uh, if you are really brave, you can use also it, uh, use it locally uh, and hopefully not uh, put it inside um, a git. Mm. So yeah, uh, this this is how Terraform's uh, handle states. So in a static file put somewhere. And in the case of AWS CDK, uh, what we really have here is um, black box essentially, or rather a, a cloud formation black box being a, ch a change set. Um, that you are doing um, when you are uh, running a CDK command, which is called AWS div. So you can verify and see the change, uh, which you can, for example, display in Terraform plan command. And there is also the static comparison you can do. So maybe you want to make it brief. Uh, you want to quickly check something. There is also possibility to skip the change set uh, entirely and just um, let's say compare your local uh, generated cloud formation templates with the ones from the previous iterations that was deployed, uh, which it currently resides in the ASRI bucket uh, created by the CDK under the hood. So as you can see, um, it may be a weaker point in comparison to, to Terraform, but if you are aware uh, of uh, how cloud formation is working, and you have experience, you have like the know-how, then maybe it's not that bad in this case. But but uh, you need to consider it when uh, making a choice uh, of the tool. Okay, so uh, I mentioned that um, that there are a few commands that allow you to bootstrap and uh, initially analyze the um, uh, CDK. Uh, but uh, there are also a few things um, that uh, are worth to be mentioned uh, right here. So uh, there is a, a synthesis. So uh, what does it mean uh, when uh, we are uh, talking about CDK synthesizing? So we have this uh, uh, construct um, concept. Uh, and during the synthesis, we are uh, basically getting these constructs that are written uh, with uh, the, the language of our choice. And it is uh, being... Uh, transformed into the cloud formation template. Uh, and if we want to do some, let's say additional work, create some uh, artifact assets, e example might be, uh, we want to put some files uh, that um, resides in, in the uh, repository as well, which usually is not the best practice, but it is possible to do this in CDK. You can also have uh, like all the components that help you generate the uh, Docker image or Docker container image in general that is being pushed uh, to the mm, to the repository in AWS. So uh, at, at this point, mm, CDK synthesize all the constructs. So it's like changing this code really you developed um, into the mm, stacks um, uh, of cloud formation. Uh, and right there, uh, there are, they, are, they are written to the CDK out folder I mentioned. So you have it locally. Uh, and you, you also have the output uh, to the terminal. So when you run the uh, AWS cell command, you also had the output um, uh, in your uh, CLI. It's not really variables. Uh, so you, you can be sure that was generated. That, that there was no typing issue and it was um, uh, synthesized successfully. So uh, it is one of the first steps uh, that, that is uh, being done. But when you are running uh, um, CDK div command, it is also done under the hood. So it is worth to mention here as well. Uh, and when it comes to the final result, um, uh, as I mentioned, there is a full conversion, but there will be tokens. So there are a few things that um, basically cannot be done at the programming uh, language level that needs to be taken care of by the um, cloud formation under the hood. So uh, if you heard about the interesting functions, well, here we have example, right? So we are referencing a bucket by the name. Um, 
cloud formation will be able to dynamically resolve it uh, during the um, execution of cloud formation. So as we can see, this is one of the perks uh, of CDK. We cannot look up uh, tokens um, during the development phase. They are only visible uh, after the deployment. Um, yeah. So there is also the execution. So the, all the assets and static files that were generated are being deployed at this phase. So they were firstly generated locally. And if, right here, we are putting them um, uh, during the deployment to the AWS. Uh, and this is the, the last um, stage that um, the CDK upcode really does. And all the wave um, from this point on is handled by uh, the um, cloud formation. And these tokens I uh, mentioned are replaced uh, here as well. So uh, here's a graphic from the a a AWS, um, which can um, basically vi visualize how does it work. So uh, we have our source code. Uh, we are um, have, we have constructs that are being um, written in our language. And based on the um, li library uh, that, that are being um, changed um, to the um, CloudFormation template under the hood. Uh, there is also this prepare and validate step. Uh, some uh, constructs have this logic implemented. So basically, uh, when uh, developers of C CDK um, want to make sure that something is done, uh, which is, let's say, a little bit more than the, the code generation, um, this is the step that this, uh, this happens. Uh, there's also the uh, validation phase. Uh, but when you are uh, developing constructs yourself, it is not recommended to have these two steps here. But uh, AWS, uh, from time to time, have this implemented in their constructs. So uh, hence why it appears in this graphic. And uh, at the very uh, last um, step of this CDK app uh, box is uh, the synthesis. Uh, so when we have a template uh, of cloud formation and these other artifacts, only then, uh, during the CDK deploy, uh, they are being put into the cloud and um, cloud formation um, specifically as well. So uh, once again, a reminder that these tokens are placeholders that are being um, replaced on the later phases. Uh, an example that is worth to mention is the VPC ID that is being imported. Uh, it will be seen as a token, so uh, you cannot look it up. And some constructs uh, literally cannot uh, work uh, with uh, VPC this way. So if you are not creating VPC, but you are um, importing it, there is a way to, to basically meet this uh, limitation, uh, but it comes at a cost. And uh, we will be going to this um, in the, let's say, uh, pitfalls um, topic. Uh, and we will see what exactly I mean right now and how to address this issue. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have these constructs in the CDK and what does it really mean? And what 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 really happens right here, right? We have layer one, layer two, layer three. And what does it really mean? So essentially constructs, uh, are being mapped to cloud formation resources under the hood. So layer one constructs, it's really a direct mapping. So you have a construct that create a S3 bucket, right? So it is basically the cloud formation, uh, the, the equivalent in cloud formation of uh, S3 object. And, and that's really it. Like this is why I put a, a simple box with the um, cloud formation etiquette on the uh, on the side. So um, in, order, in order to vi visualize it. Uh, then we have layer two construct. So what we have right here is a little bit of improvement. Uh, let's say that uh, is like the main benefit of AWS CDK really. So we have this bucket, but we want to have also a policy deployed. And usually in cloud formation, you need to um, define it as a separate resource. But with constructs, uh, we have this package. So uh, as you can see now, we have it wrapped up. We have um, mm -hmm also uh, a bow end at the top. So uh, it is a little bit more prepared, presented. So you can see it as a S3 bucket with its policy, um, maybe with um, uh, AWS uh, KMS key, right? We have uh, a key 
itself and alias added to it. So we have this small package that is still like being um, in, in one theme. So it is a key or a bucket and it's uh, usual uh, components that are uh, being used right here. Um, and this is really uh, th this power uh, of uh, AWS CDK. So let's say you want to develop some code, you need to create it as free bucket. Uh, then you, you don't really need to care that much about these uh, additional components because just giving the correct parameters uh, inside this layer to construct, you can create these other things as well. So uh, being fresh, new to uh, AWS, it can help you um, basically um, introduce you to, to infrastructure developing quickly. Uh, of course, it's uh, it comes at the cost, so you are not aware of everything that happens which for many people is like a huge limitation. Uh, but uh, when you want to kickstart something, you want to start being uh, productive, uh, it, it really helps right here. And uh, the layer free construct is uh, going one step uh, above, right? So um, it is like the next abstraction level. So uh, I was mentioning the KMS three as three bucket, and maybe we have like our um, infrastructure um, module let's call it a, a component that is uh, creating this bucket. It has this uh, its, uh, KMS key uh, uh, and maybe there is also um, EC2 in, uh, that is needed in this like component of our uh, um, infrastructure logic. So we are putting it together in this layer free construct and we are able to deploy it as a, a single entity, right? So it, it's pretty convenient. We have like one object that is doing uh, all this work for us um, just by the mm, definition. Uh, and usually layer free constructs are developed uh, by uh, ourselves. The, um, so the, um, engineers, developers, but uh, AWS also has few. For example, uh, when, when you want to deploy the ECS Fargate, there is a layer free construct that helps you um, to do it um, uh, for you. So this is like uh, why I put a bunch of uh, neatly packed packages uh, next um, to each other. So we have this whole, um, let's say, uh, Christmas event uh, under the Christmas free in one place. And um, as I mentioned, um, there is also stack and application. So uh, stacks are really a mapping um, to the um, cloud formation stack. So uh, if you are familiar with cloud formation, uh, you, you, you can just um, create one stack that is uh, handling uh, part of our infrastructure. Uh, you want to make some uh, logic, maybe for clarity, and I don't know, uh, put networking in its dedicated stack. So it works the same uh, way here as well. Um, uh, so stacks uh, are being constructor of multiple constructs, um, and um, stacks are put into the uh, app. And app is really this a um, single container for um, the abstraction that is a programming language uh, and that is being thrown uh, to the cloud formation um, through the synthesis uh, right, right after that. So uh, when we are uh, generating the cloud formation template, which you can see at the bottom, uh, then we, we have uh, it deployed to cloud formation, which um, uh, at the end ends up as resources in the cloud. So uh, th these graphics uh, in general um, describes um, all we were talking up to this point uh, to uh, just show you how, what, what it really um, what's really going on with AWS CDK uh, as an EAC tool. Uh, and ju just a quick sum up. So what are the pros and cons of um, uh, AWS CDK? Uh, well, I, I think the, the biggest benefit is, is uh, this high-level abstraction that comes with uh, object-oriented programming languages. So we can leverage uh, our knowledge in programming to create infrastructure, uh, which is not really uh, possible with Terraform, uh, or not easy, let's uh, say this way. Um, so we, we can compare it to Pulumi uh, at this point, uh, of course. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it is a, a strong point of CDK in itself. Uh, it can be easily reused. So um, this library concept, um, so the constructs that are being created, um, they are generally available um, you know, from a, a AWS um, um, 
Well, uh, the, the constructs are provided by AWS and the higher level construct, the more pre maybe precise constructs you want to add uh, that are uh, being created by you can also be centralized and sourced from one place as well. So uh, let's say you have multiple projects and your organization has this uh, library of CDK constructs, you can reuse them uh, easily thanks to that. Uh, and these constructs are uh, ready to use, right? So as I mentioned, uh, you, you, you don't need to go to the uh, AWS docs and check uh, what I really need to uh, create this S3 bucket with encryption. I have a construct that basically asks for a few parameters. Do I want encryption? Uh, what's the bucket name? Um, and, and, and that's really it. Um, I'm just um, doing the deployment uh, of CDK and I have uh, encrypted S3 bucket. Uh, user-friendly tools and concepts for uh, AAC uh, deployment and programming. What I really mean here is, uh, we, well, we are talking about a programming language here, right? So we have the environment, we have uh, linting tools and um, other uh, stuff like uh, pre-commit we can use to, to check basically if everything uh, is um, in place, it's uh, being, um, based on the best practices. Uh, so basically everything we can do with uh, programming languages can apply to AWS CDK as well. Uh, but uh, moving on to cons. Uh, so the biggest problem is um, the fact that it inherits cloud formation problems. So I mentioned it once and um, I, I will just remind you here as well. So uh, if there are any limitation that uh, comes with cloud formation, you will probably uh, in one way or another run into them uh, using AWS CDK as well. So um, really th the best remediation is to be aware of them and how to uh, work with it. But it's um, precisely the, the, the biggest uh, con we can find in CDK at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, uh, we have this uh, high level abstraction, but it comes uh, at the cost. So it's a little bit harder to maintain. So there are CDK libraries that are being updated uh, at pretty rapid state uh, and pace. Mm, and we also need to take care of the environment. So uh, if, if there is, a, a, let's say, new node released, you need to take care of it and um, have it applied to uh, your um, environment as well. So uh, it's a little bit harder than, let's say, upgrade the Terraform version and maybe uh, changing the um, provider or module uh, version. And lack of precision given by the by an SDK level API calls. So uh, as I mentioned, Terraform and Pulumi works with uh, AWS SDK directly. So um, when we are creating resources, we are being really granular. So we are passing all these parameters about the encryption, which encryption key is being passed. Uh, when it comes to AWS CK, it's not always the case. So for example, uh, if there is a construct that is cre creating uh, a resource, um, there may be a parameter that uh, was recently added or, or just be was uh, like omitted by the developers and you don't have it. So uh, th there are also a few ways to, um, let's say, uh, make it around it, but in general, it is a problem that constructs are not ideal. Uh, they, they are not so granular, so precise. Uh, and as I mentioned, well, we can also call it a, a pro, uh, pro uh, the benefit as well that uh, CDK is doing things for you. So it's creating these um, uh, aliases, uh, these uh, encryption keys, but um, you, you, you don't really have, um, let's say, uh, super, uh, you, you don't really, su you are not supervising. Um, so sometimes when you are using level two constructs, you need to fall back to layer one construct. And AWS gives you this mechanism. Uh, you can do this, like, let's say, dissect the construct to the uh, this layer one uh, cloud formation construct and apply the parameter you, you really need right there. But it's like basically uh, getting rid of the benefit you get from the CDK. So it happens from time to time. And uh, uh, it, basically, you, you need to be aware of it. A few more problems, uh, which are the pitfalls we'll be discussing um, uh, briefly. But before that, uh, I, I just wanted to briefly uh, talk about the CDK maturity and release cadence. 
because it directly impacts everyday work uh, when you work with CDK. So uh, as you can see, uh, th these are the latest uh, CDK re releases uh, that basically span uh, through one month. And you can see there are five minor upgrades uh, done uh, through this time. Where if it's many or not, uh, you, you need to decide for yourself. But if you uh, take a, um, a look at it, um, so for example, you can just go to the release page and check it out. I put it um, for visualization, so it's not really visible, but you can see that there are features, bug fixes, and sometimes even the reverse that happens. And it's just in the span of one month. Uh, that, that, that means that something that you are working on um, may, may change um, in a really um, short uh, period of time. Uh, of course, uh, these are minor releases, so no, no breaking change, but you need to be careful when working with that. Uh, well, the benefit is maybe there is um, a parameter, as I mentioned, that is uh, not being used by, by the AWS CDK. I had such a use case that uh, we are doing um, database migration. Uh, and there, there is this um, certificate parameter. So uh, re recently, uh, AWS uh, deprecated one uh, of the certificates. I think it was... Um, RSA uh, 2019 certificate that had like a five year um, a maintenance period and it uh, was recently being uh, put in, on the shelf by AWS. So uh, it was a requirement to change it. And the CDK was lacking this parameter. And it happened around uh, October last year. And um, it wasn't important at this point, but uh, after the migration, we were like um, moving with implementation. Uh, before it was, it, it needed to be done manually. So we, we, we wanted to have it in the code as well. Uh, and, and at this point we were uh, able to add it because few uh, releases uh, passed the January, I think uh, it, it was finally introduced. So uh, it was just in time for us. Uh, it didn't impact our work or the project like security. Uh, and basically, if you raise an um, issue in the CDK repo, you can expect to have it applied quite quickly if it is like um, breaking, like important change or, or something, um, let's say that is key uh, for the uh, AWS, uh, for, uh, for AWS clients. Uh, and uh, just a, a better look on the latest release. So you can see there are features uh, that uh, includes changes to code deploy, to step functions. There is also update to layer one cloud formation uh, resource definition, which usually um, uh, results in, in a div uh, on the uh, AWS uh, CDK side. So uh, it is not changing the resource itself. Uh, but you may get a warning that it may uh, uh, force a replacement, which uh, sometimes is scary, and you need to be careful and test it through uh, before applying it. So, well, is it a, a, a con? I would say yes. And as well, few, few bug fixes uh, were applied. So as we, I would say that it's a, a pretty uh, rapid um, cadence, a pretty rapid development from the AWS on the CDK. So you need to be careful. Uh, you, you need to just take it into consideration when you are going to be using CDK that uh, there are a few things that are being released quickly that may introduce some bugs that needs to be fixed. And uh, yeah, the, this is uh, definitely something to look out for. Um, so as I mentioned, new requirement, missing a parameter. Of course, you can uh, create an issue, but uh, yeah, you can expect such um, uh, things uh, when when working with this uh, with this tool. Okay, um, I, I think it was uh, uh, maybe not boring, but uh, we we just went through the AWS CDK um, concepts behavior. Um, how does it work in the practice? Uh, I think that's the the question that um, is on your head right now. Or at least I hope so. But yeah, uh, let's move on to the uh, more uh, practical um, part of, of this uh, um, presentation. So what are these pitfalls and what I really uh, mean by that? So 
working with CDK through, um, well, over a year, uh, I, I found some things that were annoying, maybe not intuitive, um, that uh, now I'm aware of, but at, at, the, um, at the point I was starting to work with CDK, um, that they might not be so uh, like uh, clear to me or maybe not visible at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go uh, through each case I, I prepared. There are five in total. Um, and, and it will be uh, pretty much life uh, development. So for each case, I will introduce uh, you to this um, problem, how to solve it and uh, move on to the next one. Okay, so object cyclic reference. Uh, if you worked with the cloud formation, you, you might have heard of it. Uh, we, basically, what does it mean? that? The current stack we are working on um, kind of depends on the other stack, but wants to um, use something for it and modify to, uh, something from it. And it's like this uh, uh, clash that um, path formation really uh, notifies us about that. Uh, you need to, to be careful and uh, remove it uh, from, from, your, um, from your code. OK, so. Um, Moving on, right now, we are on the uh, clear uh, uh, environment. And I, I want to move on to, to, the, uh, to the branch that has this problem introduced. So uh, let, let's do it. So check out demo first case, object secret preference. And what I really want to do right now uh, is to go, go briefly through the um, through, through my uh, environment, but I might have lost my tree. Uh, <laughs> I had some issue uh, before starting this uh, this workshop, but yeah, uh, what I really have is uh, the, the directory structure. Uh, and and as, as, as I mentioned, the, there is this, uh, bin folder, library, library folder, uh, so, but yeah, uh, well, do, do, do you know how to quickly show yeah, the project? Yeah, so we have this uh, bin catalog where, where we have up definition, uh, and right here we have a, a, a singular core stack, right? Mm. Uh, and for, for the purpose of this uh, workshop, I created the core stack, which is like the main stack, which imports the uh, VPC. Let's say the VPC was already inside the account. It was pre-created from the uh, other uh, CDK deployment, and we need to source it. So as I mentioned, there are a few problems with the tokens. Right here, we are, we are using from lookup method. So uh, yeah. Uh, this allows us basically to make a lookup. Mm, what, what it really means is uh, that uh, before running synthesis, CDK will do a lookup specifically to source this um, parameter and um, basically um, cache it locally in the CDK context uh, JSON file. So the VPC I mentioned is uh, described right here uh, in, in this JSON. Mm, and yeah, this is. If it looks fishy for you, you, you may be uh, onto something, and we will be moving on. Uh, but yeah, and there, there is also this CDK folder I mentioned. Uh, but but the most important thing is the uh, application definition inside the bin and the stacks uh, that are being put into the library for folder. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that there's a small small problem I have here, which I really need to address. Uh, so mm -hmm. sorry for for the technical problems. Mm. But yeah, uh, so moving on, Let, let's run a CDK div and, and ch check how, how does it look uh, at the moment. I may need to do a 
quick fix on the site. But let's check how does it look at the, at the moment. Well, the, the problem with CK is it sometimes uh, doesn't run really that uh, that quick. But yeah, we, we have this core stack, which is like um, expected uh, to be here. And what I'm currently racking uh, is the second stack, um, which might have been um, deleted by me by mistake when I was uh, rebasing um, everything today. So I will... Uh, promptly add it to the uh, bin definition. So, yeah. Uh, but basically, uh, what we are having here is um, the definition of the core component and the dependent stack that is using uh, its um, resources that were generated, right? So, for example, um, um, a secret or a, a secret ARM. Uh, all right, so right now, when, when I will ra be running the div, we'll see that uh, one additional stack will be added. So, or will it? Mm. We should ra run into a problem uh, with the CDK itself. Mm hmm. Uh, what we'll have here, we'll uh, be, be passing uh, one more time. So what really happens here, we have this secret KMS uh, key being passed to the CDK uh, uh, workshop uh, EC2 stack, um, which is uh, granting access to, uh, to the role uh, that is created right here uh, for, for the secret that is being passed from the core stack. And this precisely uh, creates this uh, cyclic reference I was uh, talking about. So uh, right now, this error will be um, displayed in, let's say, around five to 10 seconds. That is the, the biggest problem with uh, yeah, um, yeah, working with uh, CDK that sometimes it's not really that uh, verbose for you. But yeah, let's say that uh, we want to remediate this issue. So there are. Two ways, really. Uh, what I initially started uh, working with was uh, passing the ARN of the secret instead of the uh, object uh, that, that is the cloud formation export. And thanks to that, <clears throat> I was using the uh, interface reference in the, the stack, and mm, I was able to, to get this resource in, as an object uh, in this stack. And uh, thanks to that, I didn't create the um, the circular reference um, I mentioned right, right, right uh, here. But what you can also do is to uh, basically add policy uh, to the role, uh, passing just the ARNs. So in a way, working in a similar fashion I mentioned before. So uh, importing um, uh, an interface uh, at the dependent stack, uh, but it's probably a little bit uh, more convenient way um, uh, uh, to run this. So uh, skipping the uh, the div phase, I will uh, just do the deployment. Yeah, so we, we want to, to wait uh, that much. When it comes to uh, CDK, when you are modifying um, IIM um, mm, resources or in general policies that are being applied on, on um, AWS side, uh, there is also a callback from um, from uh, from the CDK asking you, are you really sure you want to make this change? So it's a kind of like when you run a Terraform apply and you want to confirm it. Um, so of course, uh, in case of Terraform, you have uh, auto approve uh, command, which uh, have this equivalent with CDK deploy as well. But when you are not uh, modifying um, stuff that is related to security, really, for example, you are creating uh, and S3 bucket, just plainly, uh, you won't get this uh, screen. So you'll be directly de deploying without any mm, question. So this is why the CDK diff is important to run and check uh, what's really uh, mm, parsed and described by the mm, 
change set done by the cloud formation. And right here, I, I will be able to make this um, uh, deployment and fix this uh, cross stack reference. So uh, instead of basically using a built-in mechanism, which should be like, uh, I guess, first thing, uh, first thing you you will think about when you, you are a programmer and want to ask something, hmm, maybe there is a, um, a method that already uh, does something for me. And here it is, we have a grant read on the secret, but it sell it's create circular reference and you need to fall back to other um, other stuff. Okay, so th this is the, the, fir the first thing. So you either uh, base uh, everything on the ARNs, like not creating exports. Um, I mean, here we have export, but uh, uh, passing the ARN uh, or simply uh, using this ARN from the export uh, passed uh, from the previous stack um, as a reference. So this is how, how you uh, fix this cross stack reference. But, okay, moving on. Uh, we also have problem with automatic exports creation. So, this should, should be uh, um, familiar for you when you work with cloud formation that you want to pass something from one stack to another. Well, uh, CDK is really helpful here. So when you want to pass um, an object from stack to stack, uh, CDK will um, gladly create these exports in the core stack for you. Uh, but yeah, right here we have um, this problem that, for example, we wanted to modify the secret we are uh, passing as the export to the second stack. I don't know, we, we, we want to recreate it, uh, right? Uh, that there is a requirement like this. You, you cannot do this. This is the inheritance from crowd formation. So uh, whenever you are using something as export uh, or really creating exports to other stacks, you are locking this stack in. So you, you cannot really modify it. So uh, in reality, it's best for the static workloads. For example, you have a networking stack with VPC, security groups. Then you are maybe good. Maybe you are good to go with such a stack, uh, but uh, no, not not really, right? So uh, if you want to modify uh, something inside it, you need to firstly uh, take care of, of the export. So uh, we'll be doing it uh, just uh, right now. Okay, so uh, we switch to branch and I will check. Okay, <clears throat> so previously I messed up a little bit and uh, missed this stack in the uh, first example, but uh, here we have it all already. And uh, what's the problem? So um, what I really want to do right now is uh, just uh, try to run CDKD and see uh, what, 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 what's happening, right? It should just go, go through because we didn't really modify anything at this point yet. <clears throat> but it will just help to visualize where the problem lies. In the meantime, I will already uh, switch to the core and uh, we have this small modification prepared here, right? So uh, CDKDF is already running. <clears throat> so uh, I can start uh, modifying my uh, file uh, right here. For example, uh, I will want to do this change, right? So uh, change the secret uh, name, which we call the secret replacement. So we want for Jardu, let's run uh, the div uh, and, and see if it, it does what we really uh, want to. <clears throat> uh, why does it take so long, you may ask? So um, as I mentioned, there is a Cloud formation chain set created under the hood. So on each div you do without without explicitly saying, I just want to compare it uh, locally. Um, uh, just do the uh, template uh, like bash div command, right? Uh, then yeah, uh, you, you need to wait a little bit to uh, to make the cloud formation do the check and uh, see if uh, there is anything worth to mention. So to, it will force a replacement. Uh, but, uh, but as I mentioned, is it, uh, this secret is being um, passed as uh, an export. So um, when I do the deploy right now, we will see this error. And uh, 
how to live with, with it? So what to do? Um, well, there is al already a pattern that is known in the uh, CloudFormation world. So when you want to pass a parameter to other stack, you see probably where I'm uh, going with this, uh, and you don't, don't uh, want this export, you can use SSM parameters. So. And that's a valid solution, of course. Um, so, uh, but we have this export already in place. Uh, it will um, basically lock us in uh, for a while. Um, so how, how to proceed? Well, first of all, uh, we have this uh, first step described right here when we really want to uh, create uh, the parameter first, right? So uh, we, we will be passing here the um, secret ARN uh, as a parameter. As you can see, the, the stack is uh, failing and we will be uh, basically doing rollback right now. So yeah, it, it failed. Uh, all right, so I don't really want to make this modification, so I'll be, uh, fall, fall back for now. And add this parameter I was talking about. So uh, we, we, we have a potential solution. Uh, all right. So uh, it will also take a, a, a little while. So maybe let's move on um, to, 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 to the description of next steps, uh, why this is being created. So uh, in the uh, up, uh, basically app definition uh, file, uh, we will want to tell the second step to, hey, use this um, SSM, um, basically a name uh, or the path to, to, get, to get this parameter from the SSM. So what you really need to do is uh, pass it um, through the, to the stack directly. Uh, and you may think, well, we can, maybe pass it from the first stack, but you will be precisely doing this um, uh, export creation uh, in this case as well. So you will be passing path, okay, uh, as a parameter as here, but you will be still in the same place. So we are forced to to, to, to give up this um, like freedom of declaring everything and doesn't uh, have a need of thinking about everything because what really happens here? We are passing it as a static um, value, right, to the stack. And thanks to that, we, we need to ensure that this stack is always deploy deployed first before this one. And it happens right now, so it won't be a problem, but when you have more stack and you have to manage it, uh, it starts to become uh, become complicated. So I, I as I was, um, of course, uh, adding this uh, parameter, I need to allow uh, my... Um, stack construct to, to read it. So I need to add the one more parameter to the interface. So that, that's one thing to do. Uh, I also want to basically import it from this string parameter name. So we, we have this um, a construct here, right? So string parameter, we are using the method from string parameter. And we'll be basically getting uh, this parameter based on the, uh, the path of the uh, uh, SSM parameter. But what's, what's the caveat here? Uh, as you can see, um, we are using the method from string parameter name. And uh, from the CDK point of view, the value will be a token. So is it a problem? Not here, but uh, believe me, we'll be uh, soon coming back to this. So uh, right now I uh, made all the uh, modifications necessary to this stack. Uh, here uh, we are good as well, and in the main uh, definition as well. Um, okay, so let's do the deployment. And maybe instead of uh, all, let's try to deploy the second stack, right? That is um, creating this uh, reference to parameters. So. So we can just drag drag the uh, stack uh, ID and uh, do a deployment. Let's proceed. The cool thing, uh, I mean, cool thing. The obvious thing about the uh, the CDK is that uh, as this stack is referencing uh, the, the previous stack, it will also uh, force uh, the mm, deployment, or in this case, uh, there will be no change, so it will be a simple div 
on this stack, but bar the change uh, change set will be created regardless. So um, yeah, th this this may be seen as um, a benefit. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, uh, I, I missed one one thing. So uh, going back here, I I, I uh, forgot to comment this value. So. Instead of putting value from the export, we'll be putting the value sources from the um, parameters too. But yeah, um, the, the, uh, this is probably the most cumbersome example uh, because it's taking the longest. I think in overall, it should take around uh, 10 minutes just to explain this concept. But believe me, uh, just for the introduction purpose, purpose uh, I would uh, really like to show it to you. Uh, I promise you that the next uh, examples will be uh, quicker. I tried to do this logically. So the, the first one was maybe not the, the slowest, but uh, re relatively quick. This one takes the longest, but um, all the uh, examples coming next uh, will be um, simply put quicker uh, to do. Uh, okay, so export cannot be deleted. Have I missed something? Well, yeah. So as I'm stopping uh, using this value right here, even though even though it's being passed, so the export is uh, created uh, when we are referencing it in the second stack, not, not really passing it through the interface, but using it by the other construct. So uh, what's really a solution is going back here uh, and um, uncommenting this value. So this is a little hack you get to know when you are using CDK, when you fall into this export issue, uh, you need to explicitly say uh, that uh, you are you want to, uh, to for now keep this um, um, export. So we create the export manually, not through the CDK logic. And um, thanks to that, CDK won't try to remove the, um, the the export from the first stack when modifying the the dependent stack. And I hope you, you can see that it's getting fishy, right? Uh, right here, because we are working in one stack, but it's modifying another stack, right? So I hope you, you, you catched it because we'll be going back to it uh, in an example or two. But yeah, let, let's um, just um, go on with the deployment. Uh, honestly, I, I, I should really uh, check this. Um, uh, how was it called the mm -hmm. this the skip of a uh, cloud formation chain set uh, but i don't really see it as a best practice so I, I didn't really want to introduce it during the presentation but it would probably uh, speed up uh, things a little bit okay but uh, what has happened uh, we successfully um, got this value from parameter uh, we used we have used it uh, uh, right here and uh, thanks to that, we already um, uh, are done with the um, second step, right? So uh, what, what we really need to do right now, uh, we still have this export uh, right here. So what's the next step really is uh, getting rid of this. And will it delete it? Not really. Uh, and why I, I will uh, briefly explain it. So instead of having this, um, this secret, uh, right, which is being referenced, um, EC2 secret. So, uh, so uh, we are talking about it right here. Uh, we don't really want to have this um, pu public uh, uh, variable. Mm, so, I want to uh, comment it out. Uh, uh, from this point on, uh, we, we will be using it as a constant. As, as, as you can see, this is the instantation of the contract. So. Uh, if you look carefully, the logical name, which is being passed right here, is still the same. So CDK will treat this the same way as it was treating this. So in a way, we will uh, basically get a way to um, test CDK to stop um, exporting this value, and so that we'll be able to uh, remove it. As it it's not being used by anything right now, it will pass. Uh, but yeah, okay. So, but uh, we, we we are losing uh, this value, uh, the, the secret secret for full ARN. So what we really want to do instead is um, to use the, 
constant variable that is just uh, our local var uh, for this stack. So yeah, uh, we, we deleted uh, public variable definition, uh, which is global. We, we are using the local one right now. So there will be no, no export generated. Uh, and yeah, mm. so we will stop uh, using this as well as uh, it's not, not, not longer available from the first stack. And in the dependent stack, we, we really want to have this commented uh, uh, out. And uh, the last thing to do um, is to validate the config. So uh, it should be it. So let's continue with the deployment. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's why I mentioned that this is the longest um, example from uh, every, every uh, single one present here. Mm, but yeah, so we switched from the exports to the parameter stores, um, uh, parameter store uh, par values uh, from SFM. Thanks to that, we are not locking ourselves in. We can uh, still uh, modify uh, the, the first stack, but we are sharing uh, some data from it to the second stack through the parameter store. But it, it, it's at the cost of uh, really uh, having a need to hard code the um, uh, path uh, uh, to the second uh, stack and being aware that it's always need to be deployed uh, after uh, this one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just uh, sped up a little bit too much. But uh, yeah, th this is the 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 charm of the uh, live uh, programming, right? So uh, I, I cannot uh, cook, uh, de delete this export uh, yet. So, mm. uh, but yeah, in in a nutshell, this is really uh, what we what we uh, want to do, and um, maybe just to speed up things a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I will be uh, sk skipping to the next example, but um, w w the, the message here is really that uh, if you don't want to be locked in by the exports, just uh, fall back to the uh, SSM. But yeah, to, to not to not waste time, uh, let's um, check out to uh, oh, the stash changes and. Check out to the uh, first example. So demo or so from lookup method. And to, what I really uh, want to do right now is to run a quick diff because uh, all the stuff that um, I basically missed uh, presenting the, the previous example will be should be corrected uh, right here. Mm. So uh, so yeah. All we will fall uh, into the same issue, which I'll need to figure out how to get rid of. Uh, but hopefully it, it will be a little bit more uh, nice to me today. But yeah, uh, but basically the, the, this step is based on this, uh, the previous one. So if you go go through it uh, in, the, in the order, uh, it should basically uh, work out. And uh, as you can see, uh, yeah. And so it's replacing the value and uh, deleting the, uh, the the export. This is uh, what we were expecting. Uh, and I think this is this is the mistake I made. So um, CDK still uh, thinks that it should use import. Hence, um, it will be trying to. Um, to, to, to change it to SSM, but um, it still needs to first modify uh, the first stack and it, we, we are running into the uh, circular uh, dependency stuff um, or rather export dependence uh, right here. So I, I expect it uh, sadly to fail uh, really, but uh, let's see. And this is like the, the key, like uh, why I want to to showcase it to you, because it's not really that uh, convenient when you are working with uh, uh, with this and you are not aware of it. So right now, I 
honestly, I, I thought it's uh, prepared, <laughs> like to top nest. So the steps are uh, described uh, right after another. But due to a few um, uh, re rebases I, I, I did uh, today to, to make it a little more, more verbose, I might have uh, messed up uh, this a little bit. But it just uh, proves my point that, uh, yeah, um, we, we need to, to be careful uh, when doing this. Mm. So as it blocks me uh, from this example, let's uh, just check out the, the second case. Git slash pop. And uh, we, we don't really have that much time, right? So um, may, maybe what I really want to to do is to, to change the plan a little bit. Uh, and yeah, mm, so uh, ju just to make uh, things uh, uh, quicker, we need to tell uh, CDK that, uh, yeah, it's still needed, this and this, and not this. So uh, next two minutes, we decide if we'll be just uh, go, go through uh, everything, uh, not in a workshop way, but uh, just explaining what, what's uh, the problem about. But yeah. So what I really want to do is to use this value. Maybe, maybe not comment this, but Having, being sure that it's not being passed here. So I want to specifically deploy this, uh, this stack. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Leah, uh, can, can we uh, like may, maybe go over the um, reserve time or sh should I just um, quickly wrap it up uh, to, to, to not, uh, have everyone miss anything? Uh, it's actually up to you, but usually we <laughs> we are trying to mm -hmm. be uh, like to keep our timelines. So please, yeah. if you'd like to continue and uh, uh, like to continue complete your topic, so mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, basically, what I'm doing right now is uh, quickly uh, cleaning up my mess from the previous example. And instead of uh, jumping right, uh, like doing it completely in this uh, repo, I will just um, uh, move on to the next example. Uh, because it should now be deployable. But uh, we, we have something new, new right here. So the, the, there will be a, a look up there. So uh, in the meantime, uh, just just let me uh, sh show you the next problem. So uh, I mentioned that from lookup methods, right? So uh, in order to have like the VPC ID uh, when you are not creating it directly in your uh, CDK application, um, you need to provide it, uh, let's say, in a hard way. So I, I, I needed to provide the VPC ID to, to the first stack directly so it can do the lookup and source all, all the values you, you saw in the context um, and CDK file. And yeah, uh, this is basically a limitation. So uh, here I'll be showing you uh, why. And um, as you can see, the deployment is going on and I really want to comment this because it's probably the, the quickest uh, example to show you, uh, but yeah. It requires this this single step to to be to be done. So the, the deployment that failed me uh, last time is basically being uh, done uh, right now because I first needed to update the second stack to remove the the export reference, and just because of that, I could really uh, move on in the core stack from. Um, from the uh, publicly available, uh, globally uh, available variable to the local one. 
and, and I, I didn't need to use, um, you know, the, uh, the exports. So uh, this, this one is a little bit quicker. Um, so I really want to uh, create a, a, um, a new object that will be doing the lookup uh, on the, the this uh, uh, very um, parameter store value as well. So as you can see, for, from the for the first time, there is dummy value four, uh, which is also uh, like a problem uh, when you are uh, developing CDK because. You need to make code uh, code aware uh, that uh, it may happen. So, for example, in my current project, we need to do something like um, an if loop, uh, yeah, an if function that was checking if uh, there was a dummy present in the lookup. Uh, otherwise, uh, the stacks were misbehaving and failing. Uh, and I will uh, briefly speak with you about it. But uh, as you can see, I created. Um, it, uh, with the value from lookup and uh, CDK JSON was modified. We have this new, br a brand new parameter, uh, which has this suffix, uh, which con uh, which just ends with RM. So what I really want to do now is to change the secret name. So I will uh, force um, the replacement here as well, right? Um, so the secrets will change. This token, Will be adjusted, but as I mentioned, it won't be visible to our code up until to the point where we are at the uh, basically code formation uh, deployment, which is happening under the hood. Uh, but this value, uh, you know, we will ch change the uh, change the um, the parameter uh, the, the the parameter itself. But lookup will still uh, uh, this is a small spoiler remain the same. Because when um, when you have a, a value from lookup, and we already have this value uh, in the CDK context, CDK won't do the uh, fresh lookup. It will just uh, read it uh, from from the file. So it is the next limitation you need to be aware of. Uh, the de deployment is on right now, so we have a deletion of the secrets manager, and um, a secret and the, the new one uh, is being created and it has been done. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, so as you can see right now, it is uh, with this uh, suffix rm. And this is exactly what we will be displaying uh, by this console log. But um, still, so it's the previ previous value. So what I really want to do is to manually, sell okay. manually, you need to adjust the context, remove this, and uh, basically run the deploy or a div again. And you will see that instead of uh, this value with rm suffix, we'll get uh, the correct uh, updated one. So this is the next limitation, um, uh, which we are running here, um, right next to the uh, dummy lookup, which is also problematic, not everywhere. Like It's not like every resource, um, uh, let's say, cries because of that. But um, it can be. Uh, a problem, for example, working with S3 bucket, which I will uh, shortly uh, show it to you. Mm. But yeah, as we are running out of time, uh, I'm trying to speed it up a little bit. So uh, as you can see, we are doing a lookup. Is the context updated yet? Yeah. And you can see that the, the suffix is QS. OK. So moving on, just uh, waiting for the chain set to be completed. But yeah, we can we can move to the uh, to the next um, um, pitfall uh, which I just mentioned. So the dummy values look up, and here I really uh, reference it one CDK issue which is being open for a couple several months already. Um, so the, there is this problem that uh, when uh, you are using uh, S3 backend, if you want want to do this lookup, basically uh, creation of the S3 fails because. Uh, um, yeah. Instead of using the, the second value we can see on the screen, it's uh, doing it uh, with the first one from the iteration. So inside the code, there is also good to handle it through the, for example, uh, if, 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 if a statement uh, looking for this um, dummy string, where it's, it's maybe 
better to use the dummy value for as a whole because maybe I don't know your re resource will have a dummy in it. So yeah, um, what what happened inside the code? Uh, yeah, yeah, it finished. So uh, moving on to the next example. Mm. Else we are running out of time. Um, okay, so uh, custom resource logging management. Mm. What's really uh, what is really uh, what's it really about? So uh, there is this problem when you are using a custom resource. For example, you want to handle something that is not possible inside um, in cloud formation. Uh, that is that is quite a common occurrence when you you, for, uh, you are using uh, cloud formation and doing more and more complicated stuff. That's the, usually the case that you want to um, do something that API doesn't allow you to do. And you, you, you do this through the custom resource, which is calling AWS SDK, uh, which Pulumi and Terraform uses. So it's kind of a workaround for using um, CloudFormation and here AWS SDK, uh, I mean CDK, sorry. So yeah, uh, and here uh, there is some additional logic that uh, AWS gives us for free. So uh, we are creating a um, custom resource uh, and we want to talk about logging here. So Instead of creating a log group, AWS uh, under the hood creates a second custom resource, which is handling the logic for the uh, log group just for you, but uh, at the cost of creating this second uh, Lambda, uh, which will be a potential additional cost to you. I'm not talking about creating additional four resources instead of a singular one. So uh, what really want to do uh, is to, to go to the, um, to the yeah to the um, mm, our CDK codes we want to run CDK div uh, yeah it will work it's the second resource so right here I created an um, example of uh, running uh, custom resource inside the CDK so I, what I really want to do is run um, listing of the objects uh, in the Bucket. This one. This one is the bucket that is generated by the CDK itself. So, uh, if you are wondering, uh, this this is interesting uh, as well that this hash is a random number that was once generated by AWS team and they are using it um, to up to this date. Uh, you have a possibility to change it uh, and modify it, but yeah. Uh, so, what what would it really do is to create the uh, custom resource um, um, uh, with this SD SDK call. And if you just pass the log retention parameter, uh, then you have these additional resources. So to, to fix it, you, you really need to create one um, log group uh, yourself. So it's not like the rocket science, right? And, and uh, it's it just enough to, to, to omit uh, this uh, additional logic that CDK does under the hood. So let's say it's not always convenient. Uh, CDK tries to be smart to do something for us, but maybe not in the most optimal way. It is a good intention. Okay, we are having something for free, not to, by our uh, labor, let's say. But uh, yeah, this is basically the cost. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I love live coding. So, uh, ST, I probably, yeah, I uncommented. The, the, this uh, part as well, sorry. But uh, what I really want to show you that um, when we create a log group, that there is uh, just half less resource created doing this. And uh, honestly, it's not so obvious. There is one particular issue um, uh, in GitHub that explains uh, this and a few articles that tell you, hey, you can do this, but um, it's not native way um, uh, introduced by AWS. So yeah. Uh, what I really want to have here is this uh, div uh, with uh, less resources created, and we will be moving to the last example. Uh, so I will uh, speed up a little bit, and as we can probably see, yeah. So see, uh, we create a log group, and uh, uh, it's much more mm, co uh, compact than uh, at the first try. Uh, all right. Uh, lastly, uh, maybe I, I won't um, go into uh, details uh, about the last problem, uh, but I mentioned it already uh, uh, twice or once. So here I I'm just commenting out the second stack, uh, as you can see. 
and uh, yeah, I'm just doing the the, the deployment uh, or div uh, here uh, in this case. And by the CDK point of view, the second stack doesn't exist. So it won't look for it, it won't destroy it. It will just run the first stack. As you can see, just by commenting out the second stack, I'm already modifying the first stack. So for me, it is a huge problem that CDK is doing something for me, which is fine, right? Here it created, once again, an export, uh, in this case, to the KMS key. But you need to be aware that you are basically modifying second stack, which under the hood modifies the first stack when the template is generated. And it's not intuitive at all. And it's uh, really caused me a, a headache at uh, one time uh, when I was working with CDKs. So just be aware, uh, this is the, this is no, not, um, let's say, uh, mm, Random thing that I uh, that I saved it up for the last one, and I already referenced uh, referenced it twice because it's really um, for me mortifying that I'm doing something uh, with other object and the first one is modified where I'm not aware of it, and this is this um, uh, synthesis uh, step that is doing this uh, for me, uh, for my convenience, but it's really uh, not helping me. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you know. There are a few other things. For example, uh, I will just mention two just to, to wrap it up. Uh, so yeah, uh, once my colleague created a security group that uh, I mean imported it to, to the uh, to the code, he added new rules. And what really happened under the hood, uh, all the previously added uh, to the security group rules were purged, and only these ones that he added in the code uh, remained. And the second thing is the fourth uh, bullet point here. So uh, not everything is intuitive in, in CDK. It is, a huge, huge uh, lib library um, 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 like uh, element problem. But um, for example, here I mentioned load balancer target group. So uh, it's no problem to create load balancer. You, you can also create um, a target, uh, no problem with CDK. But you have no way uh, to create a target group and um, it's necessary to uh, basically pass it to the load balancer. So. Yeah, um, this is just the, the quick uh, uh, sum up of what I, I said and few things that uh, may, be, um, may be useful to you when you are working with CDK. So auto magic is not always convenient. That, that's that's um, maybe the the loudest uh, thing I want to, uh, to announce uh, at this point. So yeah, this is basically it. Uh, and the sum up is, is CDK a wormy apple? Is, is it like a wormy apple? It depends, uh, like with many things, right? So when you are uh, aware of the, the stuff I mentioned and you know how to work with it, then maybe not. Maybe you are fine with it. Maybe you like coding and it's, it's uh, perfect for you. But if you uh, want uh, to have this platform-like um, approach uh, to to the AAC, uh, AAC and um, um, tools like uh, Terraform or Pulumi uh, uh, are doing through the SDK, then you might want to think a little bit uh, about it. Uh, but yeah, for AWS native uh, stuff, most of the time, AWS CK will be a tool uh, to go with. So yeah, that's the wrap up. Sorry for a uh, few um, technical issues. Hopefully uh, it was entertaining uh, in a way. And I think that thanks to that, uh, I could uh, showcase to you that it's not really that, um, um, that's easy to work with CDK at, at, at some like um, um, interjections, right? At, the, um, at, at, at this, um, let's say, uh, uh, I, I was looking for a, a word, but when you have crosswalls, uh, the, there, there might be issues, right? So, uh, but yeah, examples were easy. The problems may be medium, hard. And I, hopefully it will help you uh, uh, to work with um, infrastructure uh, a, a little bit more fluently and be aware of uh, some dangers that uh, are here and there. So yeah, thank you. Uh, this is a QA and time. If you already didn't leave the uh, the meeting, uh, feel free to ask me a question. So Robert, thank you no very questions. much. No questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems like. So thank you, thank very, you much. very much. And yeah, that's it.
thank you very much for your interesting presentation, for uh, sharing your experience. Uh, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, shortly, you will receive a feedback form. Please uh, fill it in. Your opinion matters for us. Uh, we will be happy to receive your responses. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.